Hello again and welcome to part 2. Please pay close attention to this video because it is the final step in which we are testing and publishing the changes. By the end of this video, you will get GA4 up and running on your Shopify store and validate the data flow using the debug mode of Google Tag Manager and GA4. I promise it won't be hard and you might learn lots of new things. You might have realized that I am in a different environment here compared to part 1. Sorry for the inconsistency, but I promise it's for good reasons. We launched the Shopify GA4 kit 5 months ago and over 2000 stores are using it already. A lot has changed since then, we got lots of feedback from you guys and also we learned new tricks. If you are setting up Shopify GA4 kit for the first time, you don't need to do anything special, just keep following the steps. If you set it up before, while we were still on version 2.0, please check out the short section at the end of this video to get all the details about the upgrade process and make sure that you have the most up-to-date version. Before we get started with the validation, I just want to make sure that you have everything correctly in the place. Firstly, let's make a quick double check on your setup and then we will move on with the technical debugging section. For GA4 kit to work properly, we need three elements in the place. First, it's the data layers. You might remember that we added a snippet into your team called Analyzeify product data layer. Make sure that it's in the place and it has the correct code block in it. If you want, you can cross compare this code block with the one that is shown on our website about the product view data layer. We also need to check the version so that we ensure you have the most up to date version. And if on your liquid file it's version 2.0, then you need to upgrade your Shopify GA4 kit because it means that we made a performance upgrade in between. You can always check our change history on our GitHub account and also understand what we have actually changed. While we are checking Analyzeify product data layer liquid file, we should also make sure that Google Tag Manager snippet is placed here and the GTM ID is matching with your own GTM ID. So this was the first check and if we are good here, then we need to move the second section. Second section still is the same thing, but we need to check the team liquid file if this is rendered in team liquid file correctly. Let's go to team liquid file and search for product data it should show us include or render and then the, the liquid name should be here so this is a proof that our product data layer is correctly in the place now let's check the purchase data layer you might already remember that purchase data layer is added through settings checkout and additional scripts we need to do the exact same thing here the gtm snippets and the version and the rest of the code. If you are following this tutorial from part one and if you just jump to part two, already these things will be correctly on the place. Now we check the data layers and the version of it. If all good here, we need to go to Google Tag Manager container and make the same check here. In the folder name, it should be written your version name. If it's not written, that means that you have an older version and you need to update your GTM container. If that's the case, please jump to the next video where I will walk you through update process more in depth. Now, I assume that you have everything in the place and we can continue with the validation. If that's not the case, once again, you could jump to the first video of the series to make your setup again or upgrade video in case you need to upgrade your setup from a different version to the latest version. One last reminder here is that Maybe by the time you are watching this video, we are in a different version, version 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. Don't panic if you don't see version 2.1 on your screen, it's even better. That means that we improve GA4 kit even more. Nothing will be affected. You can still move on with me. What you need to make sure is the versions on our website match with the versions on your Shopify store. Let's get started with the debugging now. My favorite part is finally here. Thanks for your patience. So, we will use the debug mode of Google Tag Manager to understand if we made everything correctly and then we will also check the Google Analytics for GA4 if the data we expect is coming in. We will make a test purchase so that we can also check the e-commerce data 
the purchases, the product names and so on. Let's get started. Go to Google Tag Manager and click preview here. At this point, I would like to warn you that preview mode of Google Tag Manager is quite buggy from time to time. It might not work for no reason or it will just start work when you refresh. So please be patient here if things don't go as expected. You need to type the URL here. So let's just type in type the store URL and click connect. Ideally, it should connect instantly, which happened now. If it doesn't connect in your case, make sure that you have your ad blocker turned off if you are using one. Another solution is just refreshing the pages all around. I know it sounds silly, but it really works. So sometimes it doesn't work and then I refresh here or I refresh tag assistant, then it starts working. If nothing works, turn off everything and reopen your browser. It might work then. This is all about the cookies and the glitches between those. So just try and then you will finally achieve the, the result that we want, which is tag assistant connected, as you see here. So now the tag assistant connected, which means your Google Tag Manager account is already working with your store. And let's see what tag assistant tells us. There are two tabs here. One is GTM, the other is GA4. We will come back to GA4 soon, but now let's stay with the GTM. Once again, if you are not seeing the GTM here, most probably there are problems with your code. Either you didn't add the GTM code properly or you added the wrong GTM ID. On this section, we will see the tags that are fired and not fired. And on the left hand side, we will see the events, the data layer events and the GTM events that are pushed to Google Tag Manager debug mode. We will use both sections nicely. Now let's start playing around. Let's find a product page. I'll just click this one because that's already a product page. And Tag Assistant is still connected. Now this should trigger the event. Let's just check the product detail event. Product detail event, this is a data layer event, should trigger the tag, should fire the tag, GA4 view item. That means we did this work correctly and our GA4 event is triggered nicely. Now let's click into that and check the values in it. Here I have a couple of tricks. If you don't choose the event here and, and only click the tag, then you will not see the data in it. That's an important thing to keep in mind. So let's firstly click the data layer event and then the tag that is fired. In this way, we will see the data that is being pushed to GA4. Your configuration tag, which is the GA4 measurement ID, the event name, which is view item, this is the standard event name for Google Analytics Force product view uh, feature. And then there are the items. Obviously there is a single item now, so we should be seeing the item name, ID, brand, items category if it's connected to any and if there is an item variance uh, the variance title here the price and obviously the quantity if this data seems correct that means we can move to the next step which is the purchase event let's go to the store and click one product add to cart i will add multiple products because I, I want to show you the product data with multiple products there were some problems with this in the version 2, it didn't work for all stores, but now we made a great performance upgrade and now it works for all stores that we checked. I hope it will work in your case as well. If that's not the case, please comment on this YouTube video and provide more details about the problem. We will try to fix it with the next update. Now I will just go to my cart page and let's just click checkout. I will try to complete this purchase. During the checkout steps, our GTM will not work because I am I, because I don't have a Shopify Plus store, so I don't have a right to enter codes on this section. If you are running Shopify Shopify Plus store, then that's also possible, but I will skip that for now. I'll just fill this form quickly. I'm ready to complete my purchase, and I expect to see the purchase details in Google Tag Manager debug mode as a purchase event. Let's just continue with the payment. I added a test bank details here just to make it easier for all of us to follow. Okay, order has been completed and as you see, when I am on the thank you page, I immediately see this tag assistant connected. Um, that means that our GTM code is working again, thanks to script in the checkout. Let me quickly show you again so that you map things in your mind easily. These additional scripts in the checkout work with this page and another kind note here, you might be seeing here another uh, section like post-purchase. 
um, we don't need that for now we will make another video to cover that as well but for now we are working on the additional script section only i received some questions whether you should add the code into the post purchase or not for now please don't additional scripts will do our job now let's go back to tag assistant and see our purchase event here that's really great to see it let's do the same i click the purchase event name and then the tags fired in ga4 now as you can see i see multiple items both with the correct details transaction id value tax shipping price currency total value static currency rate payment type you might think what are these like current currency rate value currency some stores are using multi-currency and now uh, with the version 2.1 ga4 kit supports multi-currency um, you will be able to get the correct data thanks to these variables and thanks to this uh, gtm setup that's why we added these data layers and again our configuration tag is here so now gtm debug mode clearly tells us that the data is being sent to ga4 correctly but of course we won't believe that we will also go to ga4 and check it there as well so when you are on your google analytics 4 account click reports and then click real time here you should already see yourself as a user because we are active now and when i scroll down i should also see the purchase event which is great and if i want more details i can come here again click event count by event name click this purchase specific event and here i will see all the data that came together with the purchase event at this moment please don't get so excited and leave the video because now we are still on the debug mode and we did not publish the changes so this only worked because we are in the debug mode and we are testing it but as you can see here workspace changes is 39 or in your case it might look different doesn't matter so this GA gtm workspace is not published now that's why it will not work for normal user it will only work for you because you are on the preview mode but when i submit this then it will start counting every user that visits your website i know you are eager to submit the changes and get ga4 up and running on your shopify store so let's do it now while i am on google tag manager i just need to click submit and it's always great to write a descriptive version name so that people who work with you or who will work after you sees what you have done so i would just say analyzeify ga4 kits version 2.1 so that when we have the new versions uh, you can still see which version you were installing easily with this thing i hit publish here now these changes are live and ga4 should be up and running on your shopify store for every visitor before i let you go i would like to give you a better understanding of how our google tag manager container works and why we did the GA4 setup in this way. You might have already seen that there are some alternative methods such as adding GA4 codes directly into the team files and not using Google Tag Manager. I would never recommend that method because that will only allow you to manage GA4. It will not give you a tool like Google Tag Manager. Now I will explain it better. Here we have tags and there are three tags within our Shopify GA4 kit at the moment. Maybe by the time you are watching this video, there will be more, but at the moment we have only three. Um, the all pages tag, which is triggered in all pages, obviously, view item and purchase. Now let's click to purchase. I would like to show you the parameters here. This part is important because it will help me explain you how GTM works. Here we have the event name, which is purchase. This is a standard Here we have event name, which is purchase, and then we have event parameters. Parameters are the data that we are sending along with this event. There are items, transaction ID, value, tax, and so on. And here there are values, but as you can see here, values are written in this format, which refers to variables in Google Tag Manager. So this total value comes from data layer and pushes this number into GA4 in this case. But the magic is you can use these values, variables, in another tag as well for instance let's say you want to add a google ads conversion tracking tag i will simply go click new 
This is just an example, by the way. I won't deep dive into this, but I just want to show you how it works. Here it will ask the conversion ID and label. You will receive this data from your Google Ads account. For now, I will just write random things. And now we have the conversion value. We can simply click plus icon here and choose from the variables that we already have. And for us, the conversion value is the total value, right? And then it asks transaction ID. We have that one as well. Let's just search transaction ID. Currency code, no surprise. We have that one as well. Currency. So now, of course, if I add the conversion ID and label correctly and the conversion value, transaction ID and currency code will be populated perfectly from the data layer through GTM and it will be pushed to Google Ads to this conversion ID and label nicely. Now I should just name this tag correctly. And as a trigger, we should choose from the triggers we have. Of course, we will use the purchase trigger. So you can use this purchase trigger now with any event that you want to trigger with the purchase. It doesn't have to be Google Ads conversion tracking. Once again, this was just a quick example, a rough example of how GTM works. I wouldn't recommend you setting up Google Ads conversion tracking in this way because this does not support enhanced conversions. We will have another video for that and I will explain you in depth how you can set enhanced conversions for your Shopify store still using our Shopify GA4 kit. I don't like to promote our app Analyzify in these tutorials because that's not the point. However, now I will mention about it because we receive a lot of questions on what is the difference between Shopify GA4 kit and Analyzify app on Shopify? Obviously, Analyzify app provides more in-depth data. When you check the data layers here and events, you will see we have many other events, not only purchase and uh, product detail. You will also have add to cart, initiate checkout, checkout steps, product impression, and so on, as well as the data layer variables. We included many data layer variables in Shopify GA4 kit as well, but some is obviously missing. So Analyzify firstly provides you more in-depth GTM container, obviously. And the second main benefit would be the number of tags. Um, Shopify GA4 kit only focuses on GA4, but the app offers more tags, such as Google Ads, especially remarketing, dynamic marketing, and all the others that you see on this page. So if you only need GA4, purchase data and product view data, that's great, just go with the Shopify GA4 kit. But if you want more in-depth data and if you are interested in getting more accuracy as well as more data into your GA4 account, Google Ads account and more, uh, then you might choose Analyzify. I think it's a great deal because it also includes audit and implementation done by our experts. Simply saying, if you choose done for you setup method, our team will do the setup for you. I would also like to mention that by the time you are watching this video, you might not be able to see the same price because we keep improving our app and offerings and also it reflects the price. But I would like to mention that it's only a one-time fee and it also comes with three months advanced support. So this is all about Analyzify and as we have already completed the setup of your GA4 kit, now you can already enjoy the data in GA4 without using any app as well. If you have any questions about GA4 kit, if anything went wrong on your setup, please type in the comments and we will try to help you with that. If you have any questions about Analyzify and what we offer there, you can simply go to our website, check what we offer and also ask your questions if you have one. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos.